So when I look at a human, I have a graded scale. You are either in some degree of growth or you're in some degree of protection based on the signals. Here's the interesting aspect. The most important growth promoting signal in the world today for a human is love. It exceeds nutrition. A child getting love will grow. A child not getting love will be stymied in its growth. For example, in Eastern European orphanages where kids are given a lot of nutrition but no attention, their growth parameters, their intelligence, their height, every aspect of their development is reduced by 30% or more, most of them becoming autistic. What is an autistic child? Think about it. An autistic child is not responding to the environment. Why not? Because somewhere in its development, it started to put up the walls of protection because it wasn't getting love. And at some point, it shuts itself down and is no longer responding to the environment that is the highest form of protection. But look what happens to the child. It will die from the process. And the issue is this. When you are in fear, you're shutting down your growth mechanisms. When you're in love, you're enhancing your growth mechanisms. And it's as simple as that. It's a dual strip, one way or the other way. And there's a mechanism for it. In your system, it's called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The hypothalamus is the portion of the brain that gauges the signals. When the environmental signals come into the mind, the mind says, is that positive or is that a negative signal? It has to know. And the idea is this. If it's a negative signal, then what's going to happen is the stress is going to activate the pituitary gland. Re remember the word pituitary gland in basic, basic education? It was called the master gland. Why? Because the pituitary gland is going to control the shape of the body. So there's two shapes, growth or protection. In negative signals, what ultimately happens is this, is that, oops, excuse me, in negative signals, what happens is this that the stress activates the pituitary gland to get into fight or flight. Remember fight or flight? Here's the issue. I have two parts of my body that I can sub subdivide for you right now. This area has all the organs in it. This is the viscera. What do you think the function of the viscera is? Growth. This is the muscles and the bones, support. What else is it for? Protection. So here's the point. When I get into fight or flight, am I going to use my viscera or am I going to use my muscles to survive? The muscles. So here's what happens. The hormones released by the adrenal glands cause the blood vessels in the viscera to squeeze and push the blood to the periphery where the muscles are so I can feed my muscles and get ready to run. And the issue about that is what was the function of the viscera? Growth. But if I take the blood and send the, the blood from the viscera to the muscles, what happens to growth? It stops. Ah, under stress, you shut down your growth mechanism. Also, your immune system is a protection system, but the immune system doesn't protect you from lions. What does it protect you from? Bacteria and viruses, things that get under your skin. So the adrenal system is for protection against things in the environment that threaten you. The immune system is to protect you from things that get under your skin. So here's the point. If you're running away from a lion and you're in fight and flight, do you think you need the immune system? No. And in fact, because the immune system uses so much body energy, here's what happens. When the adrenal hormones get higher, it shuts off the immune system. As you get under stress, not only are you stopping your growth, but you're now shutting off your immune system. You find that at work or at school, when school comes to the end of the semester and everybody's under stress, that's when everybody starts getting sick. And the reason why is stress shuts off the immune system. It's so effective that medical doctors use the stress hormones to inhibit the immune system in people that they graft tissues and organs into. Why? I don't want them to reject the graft. So how do I stop them? Well, I want to shut off the immune system. I give them stress hormones. Well, if you're under stress, what are you doing to your own biology? You're opening yourself up for things to then come and attack you. And the last interesting aspect about it is simply this. When you're in fight or flight, are, are you going to use reflex behavior or are you going to use thinking and logic behavior to get out of the mess? Okay, why that's important? Because the hormones, remember I told you the hormones squeeze the blood vessels in the viscera and force the blood to the periphery? Well, the same hormones squeeze the blood vessels in the forebrain and push the blood to the hindbrain where reflex behavior comes from. Here's the point. Under stress, you are less intelligent. 
And you ought to know that if you've ever taken any school classes and you took that exam and you said, well, I know the, all the answers, right? And you sit down and you start doing the exam and you come to question number seven and you go, I don't know this one. And guess what? You can feel your body tingling. Why? Well, the first thing is you're getting blood in your arms and legs ready to run out of the classroom, save your life. But then as you're doing this, you're realizing, I can't think of the answer. I can't think of the answer. So you say, okay, let me go to the next question. And that one's a simple one. You know what? You don't know the answer to that one. And the reason why? When you get under stress, you get ready for reflex behavior. Your conscious intelligence is reduced. So what does this mean in the world that we live in? Every time you turn on the news, every time you watch the TV, every time you listen to the radio, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid of this, be afraid of that. The air is bad. Flesh-eating bacteria are coming. Think. So the bottom line is this. What do you think about your normal adrenaline levels in the population? They're so high, we're all under stress. People are getting sicker by the day, and we're getting less intelligent. So in conclusion, let me wrap it up and show you this. Here's the point. The body is like a camera for the following reason. Whatever the environmental signal is, it's picked up by the lens. So the camera sees something. The lens picks it up and translates it into the film where you make a complementary copy so that the camera always makes a complement of what is found in the environment. Well, the truth is, in biology, it's the same thing. The cell is like a camera. Whatever is in the environment, the membrane is like a lens. It picks up the image and sends that image to the nucleus where the database is. And that's where the stored images are. And the interesting aspect about it is this. The cell will make a physical structure to complement the environment. So that's so if you're a diagnostician and you're looking at somebody's health, their physical expression is a reflection of the environment that they're in because they're making that mimic. So the bottom line is this. When you open your eyes, is this the image you see? The reason why? If you open your eyes and live in this stressful situation, what are you going to do to your physiology? Adrenaline, fight or flight, shut down growth, shut down the immune system, and be less intelligent. But you could easily look at the world and see a much better, healthier picture. For example, Maxfield Parrish's ecstasy, when you see this picture. So the question is, uh, I could see this world and see this, and what do you think I'm going to be in growth or protection? Growth. growth. So the bottom line is, how I see it is adjusting who I am. Well, the interesting part about that is as follows. The perception interfaces between the environment and your biology. But your perception is belief, and therefore, Beliefs act as a filter between the real environment and your biology. So your belief filters interfere if they're not accurate. If your beliefs are off, you're going to select genes that are inappropriate for the environment. So again, what keeps you in balance? Keeping your perception clear. So the bottom line is this. We actually end up with a filter between the environment and the camera, which is learned. We learn these filters. Before we were born, we were already learning. On the weekend course, I talk about conscious parenting. Many of your beliefs were already installed in you before you were born through the interaction of your mother and her perception of the environment because she was helping. Mothers and fathers are actually per, are genetic engineers. They are selecting genes in their offspring as they develop so the offspring fits the environment that the parents live in. Interesting point. Well, the question is this. We have filters. So now you've got envelopes in your, in, that you came with. There's a red and green filter. Let's call these belief filters. And what I would like you to do is put one or the other filters in front of your eyes. Pick a red one or a green one, whatever one they got, and hold it up in front of your eyes and look at the screen. I'm going to ask you a question. and the que no, keep, Don't open them up if they're gr double. Keep them, keep them folded, OK? Here's, here you go. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. When you look at the picture, tell me if this is a picture of love or fear. When you see it, does it look like love or fear with your glasses on? Put the glasses on. Are you living in love or are you living in fear? Okay, now take the glasses off and find the other glasses. Okay, you got a different set of glasses now? Okay, put those up. You ready? Are you living in love or are you living in fear? Okay, are you living in love or are you living in fear? Love. Well, here's the simple point. This is the beautiful point. Life has everything in it. Life has everything, but you will only see what you have perception filters to see. And you were taught perception filters. You were taught by your parents. You were taught in school. You were taught how to see life. And here's the beautiful part. 
we can remove these filters that have interfered with our lives and it does not take long and the beautiful part is after the break when Rob Williams comes up here he's gonna show you and give you tools of how you can rapidly change your filter and in the process select healthier more growth satisfying genes than the ones that we tend to be selecting because of our concern about the environment so the bottom line is this you are all powerful and the fact is knowledge is power with this knowledge you have power over the unfoldment of your own life you have power over which genes are going to be activated which behaviors you're going to express you are all powerful you are not victims of genes and the beautiful part about it is all you have to understand is what beliefs are you selecting genes with and if they're not appropriate you can change these beliefs. And this is the beautiful part about the second half of this program. Thank you very much for your attention on this. Thank you. Thank you very much.